is up everybody golden yogi here and you are tuning into the channel with the golden perspective today once again we are going to look at the on-chain newsletter from glass node insights this week is week 27 yep 2022 titled the expulsion of bitcoin tourists before we get into that i want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already while you're down there, please be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. And uh, while you're down there as well, feel free to follow me on any of my other socials. All the links are down there. I especially think you should check out Odyssey, which is uh, a decentralized version of YouTube. You can get paid for watching movies and you can even make money off of uh, if you go read up about it. I have some old videos about it. Anyhow let's get into it all and also leave me a comment let me know what you think i appreciate everything you have to say just please let's use kindness and compassion as they are free and help make the world a better place okay here we go bitcoin has locked in one of the worst monthly price performances in history with prices trading down to negative 37.9 percent in june Bitcoin has seen a near complete expulsion of market tourists, leaving the resolve of hodlers as a last line standing. Now, I gotta say, if you're here even listening to this, I have to applaud you. Most people, it's that time where people just start to check out completely, but you never know when things are gonna pick back up. So it's good to keep, keep an eye on things. As the first half of 2020 comes to a close, Bitcoin has locked in one of the worst monthly price performances in history. Prices traded down 30, minus 37.9% over the last 30 days, competing, or com, competing only with the 2011 bear market for the crown of the worst month on record. For a sense of scale, BTC prices were sub $10,000 in, two, or, sorry, sub $10 in 2011. Bitcoin prices consolidated this week, digesting the losses of of the month and maintaining a steady trading range around the 2017 20k all-time high. The market opened at a high of 21,471, traded down to a brief mid-week low of 18,741 before rallying to close at 19,139. With the U.S. inflation estimates for June remaining elevated and storm clouds of a potential recession looming, the market remains heavily risk-off. This is evident in the on-chain performance and activity of Bitcoin, which has reduced modestly in recent weeks. With network activity now at levels coincident with the deepest bear phase of in 2018 and 19, it appears that a near complete purge of market tourism has taken place. The activity that uh, does remain, however, appears to align with the steadfast trend of high conviction accumulation and self-custody. Exchange balances are draining at historically high levels, and shrimp and whale balances are increasingly meaningful. With such complex and arguably divergent uh, market forces, in this edition we will attempt to identify the key trends that are emerging in on-chain performance and supply distribution for Bitcoin. The End of Bitcoin Tourism one of the most fundamental concepts in Bitcoin analysis is the assessment of on-chain activity. The idea is to identify relative strength or weakness in the user base, especially to identify changes in macro network character. High activity is often synonymous with an influx of new demand, increased speculation, and is usually associated with bull markets, shown in the green below. And low activity is often synonymous with greatly reduced demand and waning interest from market tourists and is typical of bear markets shown in red. So we see this whole channel moving up from the bottom right left to the top right, not top right, but middle section. And we see these peaks of the, <clears throat> of the uh, bull markets there. As we, shortly, as we will shortly explore, almost the entire suite of on-chain activity metrics indicate that the number and activity of network users are approaching the deepest historical bear market territory. The Bitcoin network is approaching a state where almost all speculative entities and market tourists have been completely purged from the asset. <clears throat> Address activity is, for example, has declined by 13% from over a million per day in November to just 870,000 per day this suggests a little growth in new users and even a struggle to retain existing ones. 
A more advanced version of this metric is the number of active entities which benefits from our clustering algorithms. These methods collate multiple addresses and assign them to on-chain entities, providing a more accurate and clear reflection of the more probable active user base. Active entities did experience a notable rise in post-November 2021 all-time high as participants speculated on a further price leg up. However, this expectation has since dissipated and has now established the prevailing downtrend. There are around 244,000 active entities per day, which is languishing around the lower end of the low activity channel typical of bear markets shown in red. A retention of hodlers is more evident in this metric as active entities generally trending sideways indicative of stable base load users. <clears throat> Participant capitulation can be clearly observed through the collapse of the entity net growth, which shows the difference between new and leaving entities on chain. With the exception of two major spikes during the Luna collapse and the sell off in late June, overall growth rates are lackluster to say the least. Most recently, the user base growth rate has plunged by around to around 7,000 net new entities per day which is similar to lows seen during the worst bear market levels in 2018 and 19. The hodler base load. The number of settled transactions sheds further insight into the demand for block space and network utilization on any given day. Assessing transaction counts is slightly more nuanced than active addresses entities for two reasons. Limits on available block space create a, limited, a limit on transactional capacity with fees being the release valve which are very low, indicating almost no observable congestion. An increasing efficiency of transactional technologies such as batching and SegWit, both of which saw large-scale upticks in adoption through 2020. Extremely sharp decreases in transactions counts can be seen to punctuate the end of the bull markets in January 2018 and again in May of 2021. After a few months of recovery, transactional demand can be seen to move sideways throughout the main body of the bear. This indicates both a stagnation of new entering demand, but also probable retention of a baseload users, meaning the hodlers. To reinforce this point, the number of addresses with a non-zero balance continues to grind higher, hitting a new all-time high of 42.4, sorry, 42.2 million and only minimally influenced by the recent capitulation drawdown. The, bit more, the Bitcoin network often sees a significant purge of wallets during major sell-off uh, events and in, nearly, and in er, early bear markets, as investors capitulate and spend everything. We have a couple dates here to look at. One, January to March of 2008 saw a flush of around 7 million addresses which initiated the bear market and was equivalent to 24.4% of the total. This remains the largest reduction on record. Next was April to May of 2021. Saw a collapse of around a million non-zero addresses amidst the great minor migration, a reduction of 2.8% and quite a mild reaction compared to the 2018. Then we have the May 2020. Saw a removal of 430,000 addresses a reduction of 1% and significantly less severe than the April May 21, despite a larger price collapse. Post 2018, the severity of non zero addresses capitulation can be seen to diminish, indicating that there is an increasing level of resolve amongst the average Bitcoin participant. Meaning that they're probably just going to at least hold something. You know, after 13 years, it makes sense to not sell everything. Let's put it that way. On-chain activity remains severely muted and convincingly in the bear market territory, almost all the marginal buyers and sellers appear to have finally capitulated and purged from the network over the last 12 months. This leaves only a baseload of hodlers with the highest resolve remaining. There are a few reinforcements coming into the Bitcoin demand side and thus prices are correcting until these hodlers can set the floor. Exchanging divergences. Exchanges remain a centerpiece of Bitcoin market infrastructure with hundreds of millions to billions of dollars in Bitcoin value flowing through the on-chain each day. The number of exchange deposits and withdrawals tend to show a high degree of sensitivity and correlation with spot prices. Generally speaking, both deposit and withdrawal accounts trend alongside price peaking around bull market tops 
When the inflow of a speculative demand is highest, withdrawals green are often uh, fewer in number relative to deposits in pink. This is due to the exchange, exchanges processing multiple customer withdrawals in a single transaction, whereas deposits are processed on an individual basis. Over recent weeks, renewed attention has been placed on self-custody to blockchain assets with a number of lending services halting their user deposits and withdrawals. Perhaps in response to this unfortunate occurrence, we are currently seeing exchange withdrawals increasing while deposit counts continue to decline. This is historically unusual, with few similar examples in the last five years. We can also assess the dominance of exchange-related activity as a ratio of all transactions across the network. This, from this, we can identify peaks and troughs in investor activity and identify changes in base load market structure. Exchange transaction dominance reached an apex almost immediately after both bull market peaks in 2017 and again in 2021. Capturing 80% to 94% of all activity, this marks the last gasp of influx of market tourism, as new participants buy the top right before price plunges and they are subsequently flushed from the network. Exchange transaction dominance has undergone a lengthy detox since the May 2021 high and appears to be stabilizing around the 50% mark. This supports our early observations that the market is approaching a hodler-led regime. Exchange reserves continue to see large-scale net withdrawals with aggregate balances declining to levels last seen since July of 2018. Overall balance on exchanges have seen an aggregate outflow of around 7 minus 750,000 BTC since March of 2020. The last three months alone have seen some 142,500 BTC in outflows alone, a remarkable 18.8% of the total. Exchange outflows at this scale, especially in the face of such extreme downside price action, are intriguing and will further break down these flows in the next sections. We can observe changes in these reserves by individual exchange where we see an interesting divergence that's underways, underway. <clears throat> For instance, Coinbase continues to see net outflows of coins with an aggregate reduction of around 450,000 BTC over the last two years. Coinbase balance has declined in a persistent 10K to 30K BTC step function. These coins are being transferred to, to new wallets which are not associated with the Coinbase entity. These may be custody solutions for institutions, given their holding size. Binance, on the other hand, has seen a net balance increase of roughly 300,000 BTC over the same time. As a result, Binance has now flipped Coinbase as the exchange with the largest Bitcoin supply, as was highlighted by the TXMC this week. As you can see in this tweet, friends, the real flipping is upon us. A new king is set to be crowned, and the name is Binance. A withdrawal tithing of just 606,214 BTC will earn him the crown. Wow. Alongside a historically bad month of price performance, exchanges have seen the largest monthly decline on record, hitting an outflow rate of 150,000 BTC per month. This accounts for a typical uh, balance reduction of 5% to 6% of the total through June. This is in stark contrast with the flood of coins into exchanges that occurred in May, June of 2021. Where did all these coins go? The largest exchange net positive, or sorry, the largest exchange net position change on record is, is complemented by the largest illiquid supply change since June of 2017. Illiquid supply has increased by 223,000 BTC in July, reflecting a large scale movement of coins towards wallets with little to no history of spending. Generally speaking, these are not exchanges. Again, this is in direct contrast to both May 2021 and during the Luna collapse, which both saw a collapse in price reciprocated by a collapse in illiquid supply. As exchanges on aggregate continue to deplete, we can see a, uh, aggressive accumulation taking place by both the largest, these are the 10K plus BTC wallets and smallest less than one BTC Bitcoin participants. Both shrimps and whales have seen near-perfect scores in the blue on the trend accumulation score metric since mid-May, indicating their on-chain balance 
has increased meaningfully and consistently. Cohorts holding 10 to 10,000 BTC are almost perfectly neutral with no notable change to in their aggregate holdings. Diving deeper into this, we can see that shrimps are adding to their balance at a rate of 60.4 thousand BTC per month, the most aggressive rate in history. This is equivalent to the to 0.3% of the circulating supply per month. Interestingly, the rate of shrimp balance expansion surpasses the previous record set at the, two, the December 2017 all-time high when prices were also at 20,000. The shrimp cohort clearly see 20,000 as an attractive price, albeit this time with the market trending in the other direction. Finally, the chart below is derived from our whale two from exchange volume metrics where a whale is defined as an entity with more than a thousand BTC, excluding miners and exchanges. On net, whales have withdrawn 8.69 million BTC from exchanges we track and their accumulation and distribution cycles appear to be well correlated with market price performance. Since April of 2022, whale exchange volume has uh, have been predominantly withdrawals, reaching a significant rate of 140,000 BTC per month in June. This is the second highest rate in the last five years, surpassed only by the correction in January of 2021. Conclusions Bitcoin on-chain activity is firmly in bear market territory, and the most recent network utilization suggests an almost complete purge of all market tourists has occurred. Demand for block space is low, and the growth of network users is lackluster at best. However, below the surface, the market is experiencing a number of very intriguing divergences. Despite a historically bad year to date, and now the worst month of uh, price performance since 2011, Strong hodler undertones persist. Exchange reserves continue to drain as participants find renewed momentum toward self-custody. These coins appear to be flowing into wallets with no history of spending, and the balance growth and exchange withdrawal activity of both shrimp and whale cohorts are at historically aggressive levels. The Bitcoin bear is in full swing, and it's in its wake. The hodlers are the last are the hodlers of the last resort are the last one standing. So let me know what you think about all that. You know, are these hodlers strong enough to continue to hold? There's a lot to be said there, you know. Um, yes, a lot of people are afraid of keeping funds on institutions. You know, something that wasn't mentioned here either is when the Coinbase tweets of, of angry, you know, employees that were just uh, laid off saying take all your you know your crypto off of coinbase has got people questioning things especially those who haven't been here for a while and and even more so probably the ones who've been around longer they haven't been keeping stuff in exchanges anyway because they understand uh, what it means to actually be in charge and and in custody of your own coins so with all that said, I appreciate you following along and listening and uh, follow me next week. Be sure to turn the post notifications down below and we'll see if I can get out some other content. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Love you. Peace.